Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. Now if you're new here, we talk about all things fandom and we do so in a positive way. Now that may be talking about a movie franchise, a TV show, a video game, a RPG game, or anything else that can be considered fandom. And we do so, like I said, in a positive way. If that's something that appeals to you, if you're tired of the poison and uh, the hate on your favorite franchises, then you probably have come to the right place. Because that's what we do here. And being that it is getting closer to Halloween, and we are going to be getting a new Child's Play TV show in October, we're going to be talking about Child's Play. The one that people consider to be the definitive killer doll. Predating Annabelle movies, he is the doll that scared people the most. Now, his concept goes back as early as The Twilight Zone, an episode with Telly Savalas featuring a doll that, uh, could talk, and she was going to tell on Telly Savalas for, I think, a hit and run or something. Really kind of a weird, weird little Twilight Zone episode, but it was kind of the birth of what became Chucky. It should be noted that, that when you're thinking about Chucky, that you realize he was intended originally to be much different. The original Chucky was supposed to be um, was supposed to be a doll that bled. He wasn't supposed to be alive or be possessed. It came from the uh, craze of dolls that wet themselves and cried. Well, the director, the writer of the movie, decided that he was going to write a movie about a doll that bled. You know, he had blood and you could get these uh, bandages that would go over him. Well, this little kid, Andy Barkley, who's very lonely, starts um, associating a little bit more with his doll than he should. He starts cutting himself and sharing blood with the doll. This results in the doll coming to life and killing the people who have crossed little Andy Barkley. Now, this concept sounded kind of dumb. But originally also, it was called Batteries Not Included. Now, the reason it wasn't called Batteries Not Included is because Spielberg already had a movie coming out with the title. So they decided to change the title to Blood Buddy. Funny enough, if you're a fan of Child's Play, you know that the remake movie features the doll named Buddy instead of Chucky. Could this be an homage? Perhaps. But ultimately what happened is they decided that that wasn't a very good title and that the idea of a doll that bled and, you know, took revenge on people who had done this little kid wrong also wasn't the way to go. So they came up with the concept of a serial killer named Charles Lee Ray. Derived from three separate serial killers, that are real life serial killers, it became the definitive name for this character and ultimately became the Chucky we know. Now, what ended up happening was that they decided that this character would die and through some act of voodoo would get his body, you know, get his soul into this doll. So then what happens? Well, he has to come up with a way to not stay in the doll. This would then result in the plot we saw in the movie. So the movie starts off with Charles Lee Ray actually getting into a shootout. He ends up in this uh, toy, in this toy shop. 
very much like uh, the old toy shops that you might find in a small town, except this is set in, you know, a big city, so, you know, maybe you might find some of those in a big city, although not in today's society, you would not. Very seldom are you going to find a toy shop in general. So he's in a shootout. He ends up uh, getting his soul into the style. Lo and behold, we meet little Andy Barkley, who is making possibly the worst breakfast ever for his mom. Uh, all because it's his birthday. He's going to get to open up his birthday presents. And to his surprise, what he finds is that he got... Um, he got a, a good guide work kit, which has a little saw, a little hammer, a little knife. It's got this little workbench. Overall, the toys seem to be promoting a very good thing for kids, promoting friendship, promoting a hard work and all this. And he's like, Mom, I wanted a good guy to go with it. And Mom's like, I know, but I didn't know about it soon enough. You know, so apparently the toy just come out. And being that this takes place close to Christmas, you can imagine that there's going to be this major hype, kind of this uh, Cabbage Patch Kid hype over the child, over the uh, good guy dolls. And that's what we see happen. So she's going to have a hard time getting it. She ends up buying it from this vendor. Much to her dismay, she then has to work late. The kid opens up the toy. He gets a good guy doll. He's happy. She has to work late after that. And then guess what? Uh, the co-worker that she has uh, agrees to actually watch the kid. And he calls the co-worker an aunt. But I don't know if it's ever actually supposed to be an aunt. You know, it's kind of like one of those things where when you're a kid, you call people your aunt or your uncle. And they really ain't your aunt or your uncle. They're just like friends that hang around, you know. Kind of like that. Anyway. Chucky finds out that the guy who portrayed him is actually has actually escaped. We saw this in the beginning of the movie where this guy kind of drove off. Well, apparently they caught him and then he escaped. So now he's going after, the, he's got to go after this guy. So he has to watch the news to figure out some stuff and the babysitter, this auntie, won't let him. So the aunt gets pushed out the window Little Andy Barkley gets blamed, and uh, that's where that movie goes. As far as the concept, it was really, really good. Not to give you any spoilers if you've never seen the original, because I realize that despite the fact that it's an older movie, there might be people who have never seen the original Child's Play movie. You don't know what you're missing. Let's just say that Little Andy Barkley learns really quick that he doesn't want Chucky to be to his friend till the end. Now, that being said, Mom at one point will pull the batteries out and find out the batteries were included, but they're not in the doll. And the police officer kind of hangs around. The movie has this real cliche way of handling things. However, it's good it's good fun. It really is. And if you haven't seen it, I urge you to see it. I'm not going to give you a whole lot of things you didn't know about this movie. We're keeping this video a little bit short. And uh, I have a lot more to talk to you about in other videos on the subject. So you can check out my Scream videos from, uh, from the past. And also some of the other videos we talk about different fandoms and different uh, trilogies and movie sequels. And this one, we'll get into some of that on here too. Now, that being said, uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little notification bell so you know when we do our next video. And don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe. Definitely subscribe because Miko demands it. Don't disappoint Miko. 
Now, next week we will be talking about Child's Play 2. But don't forget to join me this Thursday for all the news that is news across the fandom. And I already have some topics we're going to be talking about. Um, not many, but plentiful. So you don't want to miss that. And in the meantime, remember, be safe out there. And at the end of the day, fandom is family.